she would slow down. Oh my goodness. How did you get in there? All right, honey, how do you want to get it out? You just want to turn it around and open up the cage? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right, buddy. Okay, William Wallace. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Freedom. So, hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. I'm here with you today. This is probably the hardest video that I've ever had to make. In fact, I've already filmed it twice. And I've had such a hard time with this whole thing that I just haven't made the video. And then of course, for a lot of us, different aspects of life have happened over the past week or so. So I just put it off and I said, you know, the Lord's gonna tell me when, one day when I wake up, this is the day and y'all, this is the day. So I'm sure that you also have an experience in your life that something that happened to you maybe as a kid as a teenager may have happened yesterday and it just the memory of it and the the trauma of it haunts you and it's not just a scenario of life or death it's a scenario of was this was my was this my fault I didn't do my due diligence you go through something of that order you know when I was I'm not even sure I was five and my dad was taking me somewhere. I don't remember where he was taking me. Um, and he had a little blue Volkswagen Beetle. He, and he, that's what he drove. And it was so cute. And um, we went out one day. To, got, he had parked in the garage. And I got in the little back. You know, there was like, oh, there was, it wasn't leather. I don't think that, was that leather? I don't even know. The vinyl seating. And uh, I was sitting in the back, you know, with my little bob haircut. And dad started the car and we started to back out of the garage. And I, I still tell this, this story this way. I remember feeling a gabunk. My dad ran over the family cat in the garage. The cat had ran out. We didn't know he was out there. You know, it was one of those things. It was an indoor cat. Uh, he went out sometimes to my memory and I loved this cat. It was a silver tabby. I love silver tabbies. I love tabby cats. And um, I loved this cat. And sure enough, my dad backed up over the cat in the garage. So we swooped up the cat. We took it to the vet. And unfortunately, the vet said, he's probably not going to make it. It's not a good scenario. So we had to put him down. You know, I got over that as a kid because kids tend to, you know, we have our moments and we have memories of it. But I'm not, you know... My dad had some guilt about that. Even though he didn't know it wasn't his necessarily his fault. I mean, who would ever, you know, moments happen. It's like, I've never had to check underneath the vehicle. That was a lesson for him, I'm sure. That anything like that never happened again. But that's some tough stuff. And so I have reflected back on that because every time we've ever talked about that, I've joked with my dad about the trauma he gave me as a kid with that scenario, you know, just try to be light. And, you know, he really doesn't find it that funny. And I understand why. So I'm just going to cut to the chase on this because I don't know how else to do it. In fact, I even sat with James this morning as I drank my little cup of coffee. And I said, he said, Pater, just either you don't tell him or you tell the full story. And we all know how awesome you are to your animals so things happen to people so here's the deal so you know we got Zeus it was my homesteading my new homestead present for my husband I was so excited I made a video on him he was beautiful he was he was young and so you know when you get new animals or you are moving animals you have to reacclimate them to their environment you you can't just throw them out there we, we're still doing that with Cochise. We're still doing that with Mr. Peaches. We have spent oodles of money and time on the best fencing and the best of everything to protect our animals. My number one fear in terms of my farm, one of my number one greatest fears, it is my animals getting out. I have more fear of my animals getting out 
than a predator coming in. And we've never had this happen. So here's what happened. Long story short, I have a certain way that I do my chores every morning on the farm here, up in the barn with the house, the barn, the coop. And then I come back, it's just a certain way I get into a groove and I stick with it. And part of my groove was taking care of Zeus every morning and checking him every afternoon. He's on the other, he was on the other side of the barn in a 10 by 10, which is more space than what he needed. Uh, it was netted. He had plenty of airflow. He was where he was still, you know, being well acclimated because the idea was to acclimate him for a time period and then to hopefully let him out. Well, apparently he wanted his freedom because what happened was, and I had, this is the truth. I had just told James two to three days prior, I said, the latch on that cage is not, I said, I don't know if it's just not staying down on its own. I said, likely what's happening is a goat's coming by and hitting it and rubbing up against it. And I said, the, the door's going to come wide open and he's just going to come out. So ironically, and I had said that. So, you know, it, it, this is the, here's me reflecting back right now going, I knew, I knew. And with everything going on with move and James's schedule and, you know, everything else that's going on, on the planet, it was on the short bucket list, but we just had, it was in, you know, two, you know, that, but it should have been handled that day. So here I am beating myself up already in front of you. So I go in, I unlatched it. I go in with his food and he is, if you've never had a peacock, which I had never had a peacock, I've been around peacocks, but I've never owned one. They are very this one was, was very skittish, like, like road, think of road runner. Okay. Think of a road runner, but one that can fly like an eagle. Um, that is the perfect <laughs> description of these, of these incredible creatures. But I, all I did was literally open the latch, step in. I pulled it back, pulled it down, stepped in, walked over, dumped the food, and he had ran behind me, which was not unusual. I turned around, he was outside the cage. So I paused, literally, and I stood there and I said, okay, I know that if I don't approach this very smooth and very calmly and in a very slow manner, this is going, this could be tough. Had not anticipated that he would fly. I anticipated him running. I anticipated me running all over the field like I was, you know, you know, the coyote and the roadrunner or whatever. Here's what he did. I stepped out, he went over, so I stood still. He kind of scurried forward. And it's like I could almost you could almost hear it. It was like he said, I'm busting out of here. And he shot up. I mean, it was like an aircraft. He shot up and he was in mid, it was like he was in mid flight. And I thought, and, and my instant thought was, he's gonna land on the fence. He's gonna go to the fence. He's gonna land on the fence. And then I'm gonna have a chance, I hope. No, didn't even take that long. It's like he went up and as soon as he realized that he could do this, he took off. And when I say he took off, he took off way over there. You know, I've been around chickens when they fly. I've been around, I know, you know, it, I mean, I had just never, I told James, I said, I cannot explain to you what that looked like. I said, have you ever seen like a blue angel? Think of the blue angels. Think of an eagle. And I said, it was just this massive, impressive flight. And he just literally took off. Well, honey, I'm telling him what happened. You going to get gas for the tiller? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll keep telling them what happened. <laughs> you do that. So anyway, so he took off, and I don't mean he just went, he flew over like to the edge of the property. I mean, he went over like several acres to the next farm. It's not funny, but it was, it's still unbelievable to me. Ironically, that uh, within just a few minutes, one of my friends uh, and neighbors showed up and she, she, 
they came down and they were like, what is wrong? And I told them and they were like, so fortunately I was able to recruit them and another local friend neighbor um, to help me locate Zeus. And we did. We actually located him that night. He was just over on the next property, the next farm area that evening. So I heard him. I heard his, remember how I told you he sounded like a kazoo? So we loaded up. I went out into the woods, out into the brush, and we were gonna, I was like, we're, we gotta get him. We've got to get him. I was having a stress attack about it. I was like, we have got to get him. This is my fault. We have got to get him. Well, we were not able to because the brush, it was getting dark and the brush would, and it was, a rainstorm was moving in and it was so heavily wooded, folks. Like it would have, and you'd have to have like a bobcat to get in there. So I told him, I said, well, we're gonna come back tomorrow and see, I said, maybe he's just gonna come right back up, you know? Maybe he'll just make his way right back up here. Well, unfortunately, what happened is he made his way over to another farm and we had several people working with us to catch us. And one night, about two nights later, we got an email. We got, actually, I got contacted by uh, my second friend and she said, somebody, I know somebody that has seen your peacock and they're at their house. We loaded up, James and I went over there. We had a fishnet, we took a fishnet and the peacock was up, Zeus was up against the house. So the idea was we're gonna lay out some food. I laid out his favorite uh, mixed feed. When he starts to feed, we're gonna have to try to go after him. Folks, you could, we couldn't even get within six feet of him. We fed, we gave him the feed. He walked over, we were very calm and cool. And as soon as we started to take a foot forward, he went straight up and he flew off the same manner again. Well, of course, James had never seen that. He was like, I cannot believe that. It's unbelievable. So we watched where he went. We came back the next day. We didn't see anything. And then I got contacted by my friend. Um, she had found him over in that area. And unfortunately he did not make it. We're not really sure what fully happened to him. Um, and I'm not gonna go into the gory details. There's no point in that. But folks, I have literally beat myself up. So, you know, he, you try and you try and you try and you do and you do and you do. And we've had 99.5% complete success in terms of keeping our animals safe. You know, you have incidents on farms, you have predators. We've all probably had that situation where you have, you know, a raccoon or a possum and all that. We, you, you know this, we've seen this. But when you forgot to shut the gate, which, you know, technically I didn't even forget to shut the gate, but I have replayed over in my mind and my mind again. It's like when you have a friend and you keep, your gut keeps telling you you need to do this or do that, or you keep getting red flags and you've ignored the red flag. You know, and the thing is, I didn't even technically ignore the red flag that I needed to chain the latch. We just hadn't gotten to it. So I think about how hard I am on myself, my expectations. I think about how hard I have been on anyone around me, like my kids. And I think that's a good thing because that's how we learn to keep incidents from happening in the future. But I am just very regretful in how this whole thing turned out. I don't know how it could have turned out any differently other than I should have gone and got my chain in my lock that day. So that's what has happened to Zeus. And I wanna be very open and honest with my audience. I wasn't putting you off. I actually didn't say anything for the first week and a half or so because I really believed we were gonna get him back. I didn't at first, I was very stressed out about it. And then when we almost got him, I'm, James was like, we're gonna get him, Patera. We're gonna get him, calm down, it's gonna be okay. He's not that far. We have people helping, we're gonna get him. It's gonna be okay. And then I had to, call him at work and say, I've gone to pick him up. So anyway, I hope you're well. I, you know, if I get flack from this, I get flack. I'm sure it's going to be from somebody that I don't know. Maybe I have no idea. This is what happens when you put yourself out on social media. It's the risk you take, right? So I appreciate your support here at our channel. I appreciate you so much and, you know, supporting us and being so nice 
and I and I feel like I've more so than I disappointed Zeus more than I disappointed my husband more than I disappointed you know my lifestyle I've I've disappointed myself so this is my moment of beating myself up you might want to record this personally and watch it again because it doesn't happen very often that I record stuff like this but so it is what it is we learn from it I, I some uh, James is like do you want to get another one I said no 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 I've been offered I told the gentleman that I bought him from and he was like I, I mean and he knows that I just I've had a hard time with it but I if we do take on another one or a pair we were working on getting a pair I actually had a, um, a pretty little lady for him lined up and so I've just held off so we'll work with what we have we'll work with what we know and the bottom line is folks when your gut tells you something to do do it that day when, the, when your gut tells you to handle your business on something very specific uh, with your family or your farm, handle it that day. And when, and, and that goes for people in your life as well. Nip the problems in the bud. And I know this, and I need to stick to it. So here's the story on Zeus. I hope you are doing well. The farm otherwise is doing wonderful. So we will lear learn to live with our disappointments and we will move on. Okay, I'll see you on the next video.